Let's discuss sectioning and extracting a maxillary first molar and then preserving the socket with platelet-rich fibrin. Before we extract the tooth, we're going to draw the patient's blood and spin it down into platelet-rich fibrin. You can refer to the link on how to produce platelet-rich fibrin. And I'm going to collect two to four vials of the patient's blood for platelet-rich fibrin fabrication. Then you put these in a centrifuge. Again, you can refer to the link in Dentistry Master Classes. And I want to do that before I extract the tooth. So you can see this, is, this tooth has got uh, infection all around it, and it's to be lost. So you don't want to take the tooth out in one part because the roots are spread. If you do extract it in one part, you're probably going to lose the buccal plate or the facial wall of the socket. And since we want to place an implant after the socket's healed, we want to preserve the socket. So what I'm going to do is extract the tooth in three pieces. It has three roots, and I'm going to section the tooth, cut between the roots, and take each root out individually and preserve the facial and the palatal uh, alveolar crest walls. Now I like to use a rubber dam for almost everything. It keeps the patient's tongue out of the way. It keeps the water out of their mouth. This is the, our technique, a quick rubber dam technique. And this is the platelet-rich fibrin. See how you're, sep you're separating the platelet-rich fibrin from the blood clot after it's spun down approximately 16 minutes. You put the platelet-rich fibrin clots on this perforated tray and then put the lid on top of it and it squeezes the serum from the platelet-rich fibrin. This is a long shank, either number six or number four, surgical burr. And I'm using that to section the tooth into three pieces. Now remember, you've got a mesial buccal root, a distal buccal root, and a palatal root. So I'm going to make a cut through here and through here separating those three roots. Then I'm going to torque them just a little bit and take each root out individually. With the objective being to preserve the buccal bone and the palatal bone. So it forms a little cup for my platelet-rich fibrin graft. So the bone will grow, will reform and I'll have a nice uh, receptor area for my implant in about six months. So with molar teeth I let the graft heal for six months. Some people let it heal for three months. I let that heal for three, six months before I place the implant. Now if it's a single rooted tooth, more times than not, I'll try to extract the tooth straight away and place the implant at the time of extraction because I've got that perfect osteotomy in which to place the implant, a perfect guide. But if it's a three-rooted tooth, a maxillary or a mandibular molar, or oftentimes a two-rooted bicuspid, I'll graft the site, wait six months, and come back and place the implant then once the bone has reformed. So that's the objective here. See, so that's the cut from mesial to distal, and now I'm cutting through from facial to the center of the tooth before I get to the the palatal root, and it's very important that you cut all the way through to the frication. You don't want that little bit of tooth structure remaining in the apical part of the cut or the pieces won't torque. So I've cut all the way through the frication. Then I'm going to very gently torque these pieces, and I'm going to put this elevator in between the buccal roots and between the buccal roots and the palatal root, and I also will place the elevator on the mesial and the distal of these buccal roots and just very gently torque them to loosen them uh, so they'll pull straight out. Got to be very gentle because those are small, the buccal, root, buccal uh, parts of the tooth have got very fragile roots. It's a lot easier to take it out in one piece, each root and each part in one piece and have to go after those roots. See, I'm just gently torquing those. Then just un just corkscrewing it out of there. Not moving it to the facial because I want to preserve the buccal bone, the facial bone. Take your time. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a little space so I can turn this root and just unscrew it. So I'm creating a little space between the palatal root and the bicuspid and the palatal root and the second molar. 
So I've got a little room to move it into. I can either elevate it a little bit or unscrew it. Be careful not to touch the adjacent tooth. And this again is that long shank number four or number six surgical burr. This is a number four because you don't need a lot of space. But cut all the way through the contact. Then I've got space here. But very gently just unscrew it. It's like taking out a single rooted tooth. Then there's a lot of granulation tissue in here because we had an infected tooth. I'm going to remove as much as I can with the rongiers and I'm going to come back with a large spoon and just scrape the granulation tissue out of those sockets. Now if the roots of the tooth are into the sinus, you've got to be mindful of the sinus when you're curetting. In this case, there's solid bone on the apices of each of the roots so I can curette without regard to the sinus. I'm going to curette that out so that there's no granulation tissue remaining in the sockets. It's all solid bone. Then I'm going to scrub it with chlorhexidine on a cotton ball held by cotton forceps. Just scrub the socket, remove any little bits of granulation tissue that might remain, and then I'm going to irrigate it out with chlorhexidine in a scutan syringe so that the floor of the, the, floor of the socket is perfectly clean. Then I'm going to place those strips of platelet-rich fibrin in the socket. It's kind of like working with jello, so you're going to have to place something flat on top of it in a minute so you can push it into the socket. But the PRF, the platelet-rich fibrin, as you know, is rich in growth factors, so it, it forms a very nice alveolar process. It can be used for lots of things, burns, you can place it over burns, uh, skin grafting, but it's excellent when you're preserving a socket and you want the bone to reform in the socket uniformly. Now I'm cutting this platelet-rich fibrin and going to place this flat strip over the top of the platelet-rich fibrin that I've already pressed into the socket. So I've got something flat to push against. As my objective is I'd like the alveolar crest to be perfectly flat once it's healed. Now I'm going to place a resorbable collagen membrane on top of this, again because it's flat and I can press it and it will help form that perfectly flat alveolar crest when it's, when it's healed. So I need to make a little incision underneath the tissue to have a small flap on the palatal side so I can tuck that resorbable collagen membrane under that tissue. You just want to be able to reflect that flap just a bit so that resorbable collagen membrane will tuck underneath it. And be sure you've got a little flap on the facial also, so that collagen membrane will tuck underneath that. So you make the collagen membrane just a little wider than your extraction site. So it will tuck under the tissue between the buccal plate and the palatal plate and the uh, gingival flap. You just tuck it right underneath there. All right, so I'm pressing the PRF into the socket. Now this is a resorbable collagen membrane. This is contour adapt. See how I'm just tucking that under these and it secures it very nicely. Then tucking it under the palo flap very gently. I want a collagen membrane that doesn't have memory. Once it gets wet, I want it to adapt to whatever you place it over the top of. I don't want it like a starch shirt, and this Contour Adapt is, uh, works very well for that. And here it is in place, tucked in. Then I'm using 4-0 Gut Suture. You can use 3-0 or 4-0 to secure the flaps. You don't have to have primary closure of the flaps. Just and don't pull it real tight or the suture will pull out. Just you want a snug adaptation, but don't pull it real tight. You don't want blanching. And that's the Dental Minute. These techniques work, and they work every time.